there are many books available on nonlinear optics, but uh, a few years, years back there were very few, and I think uh, I wouldn't be exaggerating if I say that uh, most people in this room learn nonlinear optics from a uh, wonderful book written by our next speaker, Professor Ron Shen, who is, of course, one of the pioneers of nonlinear optics, various interesting phenomena in nonlinear optics, and most recently, the pioneer of the study of effects of chirality using um, surface uh, nonlinear optics. And uh, he's also one of the organizers of a previous cycle. So with that, I would like to invite you, Professor Shen, to say a few words. Good, thanks, Dima. Good evening. It's a great honor for me to speak here, especially after Professor Tans and uh, Professor Erwin Hong. Well, to show my respects to the previous speakers, I would take my tie off first. <laughs> <laughs> So, I would like to first say welcome to you to Berkeley, although you have already been here for a few days. I hope you enjoy the conference. This conference has been really exciting. Uh, the talks are fantastic, and the organization is superb. And I think uh, I should say thanks to, uh, I mean congratulations and thanks to Dima and uh, Helmut Hafner and the local organization committee for organizing such a great conference. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Also, I hope you have time to enjoy our nice weather and good scenery of Berkeley and surroundings. If you haven't had done that, I hope you will have a chance to do so after the conference. <laughs> now, ICOs have always been great. I attended, I mean, you can learn a lot and I enjoy a lot. I attended quite a few conferences of ICOs in the previous years and I always enjoy it. Now, uh, we have uh, a number of, well, actually uh, my contribution to ICOs is limited and the only significant one is that uh, I help Ted Hench organizing ICO 7 in Hawaii. Okay. And I, some of you here may have attended and remember that conference. And I think it might, maybe it's fun for me to spend a few minutes here to reminisce that conference for the old timers and for the younger people here perhaps it's interesting for you to hear how an ICO conference can be organized. So we were assigned, Ted and I, were assigned to organize ICO 7 by the steering committee. And as you probably heard already, Mer uh, it's Dick Brewer and Aaron Moradian started the conference. They also set up a tradition that the conference should be held in a mountainside, a beautiful mountainside, isolated, and enjoyable, but people will not be able to escape from the conference. <laughs> so uh, sites like uh, 
uh, Vail, Colorado, McGave, uh, France, uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and then uh, Interlaken, Switzerland. And these are all very beautiful sites. And that's actually, that was a problem for us. And we couldn't find a site in the United States that could match those previous sites. So Ted, I, Ted and I thought maybe we could stretch the tradition a little bit. And we said, well, we could find a site that has mountains in the back, but a little bit more water in the front than Interlaken. <laughs> so we decided on Hawaii. And specifically, it's Maui Surf Hotel of Maui, Hawaii. Okay. And so uh, here is the, uh, sorry, I have to find my slides. Which one should I push? <laughs> This one, right? Yes. Can you press this or use that? Yeah, okay. So, we organized this laser spectroscopy 7. And so, uh, before, a few months before the conference, we made a pre-conference one-day visit to the hotel. Maui Surf Hotel. And as you see, there are mountains in the back. Okay? And you see the hotel compound was not bad. It's kind of nice. And we actually had more water in the front. Okay. And so uh, we thought that was a pretty good site. And then we finished our business dealings and arrangements with the hotel in the morning. And then we had the whole afternoon free. So Ted and I relaxed in a beachfront cafe or, or bar. It's in one of these sheds. One of these uh, shack here. Yeah. And we had a great time. And then came the conference. And we had to first have the local organization committee. And that's our local organization committee. It, Ted has his secretary, Frida, and unfortunately my secretary, Rita, was not in the picture. <laughs> but then I have my wife here, my daughter, and my niece. <laughs> so it looks like a family-run business. <laughs> and then we dress up to the conference. <laughs> Hawaiian style. Okay. <laughs> well, I suppose you're proud because we look young. <laughs> and then we had a few eminent scientists attending the conference. And you can see the Brombergens here. And next to them is this young kid named Stephen Chu. <laughs> and, well, the job of uh, department, uh, the Secretary of Department of Energy certainly is very tough. He looks much older now. <laughs> and since Steve is not here, I can't say anything about him. <laughs> well, 
And this is a very active kid. And he was everywhere in the picture. <laughs> so, so then uh, we had the scientific talks, very exciting talks. I think including the first uh, uh, batch of talks on laser cooling. And we also have extra, had extra curriculum activities. That is, Bromberg's happened to have the 25th anniversary, wedding anniversary at that time. So we had a party for them. <laughs> and then here came the Lua. And we called in a helicopter, as Erwin already mentioned. And this helicopter rained flowers. And you can see flowers came down. <laughs> now, well, it looks interesting, but I, we didn't know what the funding agencies supporting the conference would think <laughs> at that time. But we never bothered to find out. <laughs> so here starts the Lua dinner with the music in the background and the Lua dance. Okay. Now, I should say that uh, Ted and I, when uh, organizing the conference, thought that we ought to contribute also some scientific uh, things to the conference. And so I remember that uh, I mentioned that we had an afternoon free in the pre-conference visit, and we had pina colada at that uh, beachfront bar and relaxed and chatting. Well, what can you expect when you had two physicists relaxing together, chatting, besides science? <laughs> so Ted said, I just got a powerful dial laser from a company. It emitted a 784 nanometer with 20 milliwatts. And that's supposedly at that time the most powerful dial laser. <laughs> and at that time, we were developing nonlinear techniques, actually second harmonic generation, to probe surfaces. And we had sensitivity of sub monolayer at the surface. So Ted asked me, would it be possible to use this CW dial laser to look at the sub monolayer on the surface? Well, we did a quick calculation on the back of the envelope and found that it should be possible to see the deposition and assumption, I mean, assumption and desorption of monolayer at the silver surface in an electrochemical cycle. Okay. So we thought that would be a good contribution to the conference if we can demonstrate it, that experiment at the conference. <laughs> so I went back and talked to a student and it was not uh, difficult at all to persuade the student to carry out the experiment. And then he got to go to Hawaii <laughs> to the conference. Okay. So he did that and then went to the conference and demonstrated the experiment as a poster paper in the poster section. Okay. But there was a problem. We had to align the optics before going to the demonstration. And we had to find a dark room. Fortunately, 
in, at that conference, as co-chair, we, uh, the, the hotel let us have a queen suite. And then it was a li large living room between two bedrooms on the two sides. And there's, uh, there was a uh, bathroom in the living room. So we could use that as the dark room perfectly. <laughs> Okay. So the student did that, and he actually successfully demonstrated that experiment with, uh, with some monolayer sensitivity using a uh, dial laser. And oh, sorry, I forgot that uh, after the conference, there's an excursion, and uh, Ted apparently enjoyed the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> And we submitted that paper. <laughs> and this appeared in the proceedings. And you can see uh, it's called Maui Surf Experiment. Why? Well, Gary Boyd was the student who carried out the experiment and demonstrated it at the poster session. And then you see that in the proceeding paper, we had a good, unique acknowledgement. And here it is. It says, this experiment was conceived at the Maui Surf Hotel <laughs> because we chatted in the bar, in, in the beachfront bar. Uh, that's Kanapali Beach, Maui, Hawaii. We wish to thank the hotel for its hospitality in accommodating the preparation of this experiment in its queen suite that we I share with Ted and the subsequent demonstration in its conference hall. Okay. So I think this is probably the real unique poster paper you have ever seen. <laughs> Thank you. So, well, we really had a lot of fun uh, to organize that conference. And it's certainly very memorable. But I believe this conference is certainly equally memorable. You will remember that uh, all these fantastic talks that defined the frontier of laser spectroscopy. But hopefully, you also will remember the Berkeley, the beautiful Berkeley Conference site. You know, with the good weather, good scenery, and for many years from now on, you sh the next organizers should find an equally good beautiful place like this. I hope you will still have time to continue enjoying your stay at Berkeley. And then I wish you a safe trip home. Thank you very much for attending the conference at Berkeley. <laughs>